What's up friends, Dan here, and today you're gonna to learn how to create your very first pull request. If you understand the basics of Git, you've probably learned how to clone, push, and pull, but up until now, you might have been working on repositories in your own organization. What happens when you wanna contribute code to a repository that you don't have access to? This is usually the case when you wanna to contribute to an open source project on GitHub. So today, I'm going to show you the process of submitting a PR to a public repository and also show you how to find issues on your favorite open source projects that are good candidates for your first contribution. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. All right, so before we jump into today's example, I just wanna walk through what a typical workflow on GitHub looks like uh, when you're working on your own repositories and how that differs when you're working on, say, an open source project. So here we have a guide over on github.com, which is called the normal GitHub flow. And we're gonna take a look at this first. So you might be working on something like a master branch and you're assigned a feature. And so what you do is you end up um, cloning the repository, making sure your master branch is up to date, and then what you would do is create a new branch off of that master branch for that particular feature. So you create that branch and then you start working on that branch. So you start adding some code, uh, adding some documentation, and you make those commits. So you make those commits and once you're done with that, you would open a pull request on that particular branch. So you've probably done a pull request before, but but you've done a pull request, uh, again, on code, on repositories that you have access to. So then what happens is that pull request now allows your teammates and other developers to take a look at that code that you are committing and discuss and review it. And when everything is kind of sorted out and things are good to go, you would basically merge that uh, back into master branch and deploy that code into production. So again, that is a typical workflow when you have access to the repository. Now, if you're looking at working on some code for a public open source project, you don't have read and write access to that repository. So how does that work? That is where forking comes in, and you probably have seen that big fork button on GitHub before. And if we head over there, you can see a fork. So there's a fork option here, and that's where forking comes in. So I'm gonna include these documents in the description below. But basically, uh, creating a fork is producing a personal copy of someone else's project. So forks act as a sort of bridge between the original repository and your personal copy. You can then submit pull requests to make help other people's projects better by offering up your changes to the original project. So the way, and again, you can go through this document, I'm not gonna go through this um, entire thing, but basically what happens is you'll end up creating a fork of the original project and then you can work on your project because now you have access, you have read write access to it. And then you would end up submitting a pull request uh, to the original project. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today and we're gonna do it by jumping through a really simple example. And I know it's gonna be simple, but it, it's for me that's kind of the best place to start is a simple example and we can work our way up from there. All right, so here's the example that we're gonna work on today. So Eric Hanchett, who has a really great YouTube channel, I uh, definitely recommend going and checking out his channel. He has a bunch of tutorials and discussions around front-end development and particular review, which I love. So I will link his channel below. <clears throat> so I will link his channel below, but one thing that Eric did was he started this project here on GitHub called the Dev YouTube List. And it's basically a collection of a ton of different developers who have YouTube channels. And he's broken these up into some really great categories like live coding and tutorials, uh, up and coming. And so what I wanna do is I noticed that my YouTube channel is missing from this list. 
So what I want to do is I want to submit a pull request to go ahead and add my channel to this list. So again, as I said, this is going to be a very simple example because we're just changing some text. But my philosophy is always, you know, start with the simple example and we can kind of move our way up from there. So let's take a look at how this process works. So remember I said this is Eric's um, GitHub repository and this is his this dev YouTube list is his repository that he has read and write access to. I don't have access to it. So what I need to do is make a personal copy of this repo, make my changes on my copy, and then use my copy to submit a pull request. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to click this fork, and we're going to fork that to this particular account. So. That's my GitHub, my Dan Vega. So what it's going to do, it's going to go through and it's basically taking that entire repository and forking it, copying it over to, to my GitHub repository. So now when you look up here, you can see this is Dan Vega's repository or a GitHub account. And this is the dev YouTube list repository. And you can see below forked from and then the original repository here. So now I definitely have access to this because this is on my account. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy that URL and now I can clone it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, Terminal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clone that repository. And it's just going to pull it down to my local machine. And now I can open it up in Visual Studio Code. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. And I have the project. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the README. It's just a README. So we have the English, Tutorial, Informational, Live Coding. These are the different categories. So I'm definitely English. And I would say mine is Tutorial. So I want to add mine to this Tutorial list. And so I'm going to just come down here and I'm going to say Dan Vega. And this is www.youtube.com slash, I think I can just go to slash Dan Vega, right? Let's go ahead and verify this. I'm just going to verify this in another window, but I have a short basically a short friendly URL there that forwards on to my channel. So that'll work. So I'm just going to hit save. And now if I head back over to terminal here. Um, whoops, we are not in the right directory. So GS is just a shorthand for me for get status. And we can see that we've modified the readme. So I'm going to say, um, Git add readme. I'm going to say git commit dash m. And I'm going to say adding Dan Vega to the English tutorial list. All right. So that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and push this up. So now this push is happening again on my repository. Everything we've done has been on the personal copy, copy that I forked over. So we're working completely on my repository now. And what we'll do is wind up going up to my repository and submitting that pull request over to Eric's repository. All right, so now what I'm going to do is head back to the browser. And if I go ahead and refresh this one, so this again is my personal copy. So if we go ahead and refresh this, um, we should see some commits there. So it says your branch is one commit ahead of Eric's. Then I see my commit here, adding Dan Vega to the English tutorial list. So that's definitely my commit. If you wanted to drill down and see the details for that commit, you can. So we can see, um, let's just double check that. HTTPS www.youtube.com slash Dan Vega. That should work. Um, so now uh, GitHub does this really nice thing here and it gives you kind of this, this uh, info here that says, hey, your branch is one commit ahead. Do you want to create a pull request? And in fact, that's what I want to do. I'm taking the changes from my repository 
and I want to submit a pull request over to Eric and Eric will have a chance to take a look at that and then approve or deny that. Hopefully Eric doesn't deny me, um, <laughs> but uh, that could happen. So we're going to go ahead and hit this pull request button and it's going to compare changes, choose two branches to see what's changed. So again, this would be if I was on, like if I created a branch and done some things, but basically GitHub is able to look at this and figure this out. It's saying, hey, here's the base repository, which is the dev YouTube list and the master branch. And then my repository and the master branch, able to merge, these branches can automatically be merged. So all I'm gonna do is click this create pull request and the name, uh, the title for this is Adding Dan Vega. I'm just going to put a comment in here. Thanks, Eric. Oh, I spelled Eric wrong. I do that sometimes. I'm sorry. Thanks, Eric, for the wonderful resource of developers who have YouTube channels. So I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and create a pull request. Checking the ability. So this branch has no conflicts. It should be able to be merged. And so if you did have conflicts, you would want to fix those. You, you want to make uh, the path of least resistance for the maintainer. The maintainer doesn't want to go through and fix stuff, right? Like you need to make sure that once this gets to the maintainer, they're just looking it over, making sure that it's something they want to add to the project and then they can go ahead and merge it in. So now if I go to um, Eric's, so we are, oh, so we're actually on there now. So if you look at pull requests, you can see that my pull request is on Eric's dev YouTube list and it says adding Dan Vega to the English tutorial list. So cool, we were able to pretty easily fork uh, this particular open source project, we were able to clone that repository down to our local machine, work on it, um, add our commits, push those commits to our repository, and then create a pull request over to Eric. So that is the normal flow. Not much changes from that. Obviously, it can get a little more complicated, especially on bigger projects, and bigger projects will have uh, guidelines as to how you should um, not only make your commits, um, some you may need to squash, some follow a strict guideline of like, hey, this is what information needs to be in the pull request. So you need to read through um, contributing guidelines if they have those available. But this was just a simple example, hopefully to get you in the right direction to making your first pull request. So the next thing I wanna look at is, now that you kinda know how to do this, how can you find uh, some different repositories and how can you find ways to commit your own or submit your own pull request? So I have two repositories here that I want to look at. One is Vue.js, one is Gridsome. These are two of my favorite projects. And I want to just look at ways that we can go ahead and find issues that we may be able to help on. So if you go over to the Issues tab, there's 296. Scrolling through all these and looking through what's wrong can be pretty daunting. Uh, sometimes an easy one is to just grab the first one if that's something you think you can work on because nobody really, has, really else has had a chance to take a look at it. But especially when you're a first time committer, um, usually repositories have labels for this. So if you go into labels and you search through the different labels, uh, there is uh, usually something like good first issue or great uh, contribution, uh, welcome, things like that. So I'm going to click on good first issue. And so these are all the issues that the core team has determined that is probably a good first issue for somebody who wants to jump in. So you would go ahead and click on this issue and you can kind of read through the problems. So usually an issue will start with, hey, what problem does this feature solve? What does something look like? And you can go through and read the comments and then determine if this is something that you want to work on. So that is one repository. Here's another one, Gridsum. So if we go over there, same thing. We can look at the issues. We can go ahead and look at the labels. 
and we can see oh good first issue great so these are some issues that I could work on so just a little insight as to how you could find issues that that may be good for your first contribution to an open source project and if you're feeling like hey I don't want to work on code you could usually find documentation issues as well so a lot of projects will have docs so in this one doc needs docs uh, docs deploy pages for Google Cloud Storage. So this would be a great opportunity if you enjoy writing. Uh, you could easily jump into this issue and take this one on. So I think that's it. So I'm going to leave you with the question of the day. Have you submitted your first GitHub pull request yet? Uh, if the answer is no, what projects are you interested in helping out on and what is stopping you? So I'll leave that question below. Please go ahead and answer that if you can. And if you found value in this video, friends, please leave me a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, or whatever you want to do with it. And as always, friends, happy coding.